Hi friends, so I welcome you all to today's lecture on 5 important MCQs on the securities market. So this lecture is a part of our discussion on the securities market in which we are regularly bringing some new sets of MCQs for better understanding of the securities market. And the topic for this particular video is going to be mutual funds and collective investment schemes which is a very important topic for upcoming SEBI grade A 2018 examination. So friends, we have been working in this direction of guiding students for competitive examinations for the past few years and we have been blessed with some of the very amazing results. In RBA grade B 2017, 27 of our students, they made it to the final list. And in NABAD grade A 2018, 20 of our students, they were selected in the final list. And RBI grade AB 2018, the final result is still awaited but again we are positive on this front also. Now before directly jumping onto the questions, let me quickly tell you about the courses which we are presently running for SEBI Grade A 2018. So we are offering these courses, you can avail the course for security market phase 1 and phase 2 or you can also choose the phase 1 mock test along with this securities market course and there is this full course for phase 1 and phase 2 of the SEBI Grade A. So you can choose as per your requirement and also you can avail attractive discounts by using the codes given below. Now in order to channelize your preparation in a better way and in order to prepare you for all the related competitive examinations in one go, we are also providing some combo courses for SEBI, RBI and NABAD. So you can choose the combo courses also if you are preparing for all these examinations. Again you can avail discounts by using the discount codes mentioned here. So let's start with the first question. So this is an assertion reasoning based question and it says that the assertion is diversification reduces the risk in mutual funds and the reason which is given is that all stocks may not move in the same direction in the same proportion at the same time and there are different options which are given like both A and R are correct and R is the correct explanation for A and next is both A and R are correct but R is not the correct explanation for A and next is A is correct while R is not and the next one is A is incorrect while R is correct. So to answer this particular question, we must be aware about the concept of diversification vis-a-vis -vis mutual funds. So mutual fund we know about that it's a mechanism for pooling the resources. So in mutual funds, investors come together and they put in their money and this money is eventually invested as per the objectives of the mutual fund and the motive is to earn some return on that investment. Now when the mutual fund it is investing its money, it is not usually putting all the money in a simple one set of securities, it is rather investing the money in a different section of its industries or securities. So the exposure will not be to any particular group of company, the exposure is going to be very wide, it is going to buy different sets of stocks, it is going to invest in equity, debt or money market instruments. At the same time in different sectors of the uh, industry and in the different companies within the same industry. So that's why this is going to lead towards diversification. Now if you were as an individual investing in any particular security or a company then you would rather stick to that particular company and this would have exposed you to huge amount of risk. Now when you go with diversification then even if one of the shares in the portfolio it, arise, it falls but the overall portfolio it has high chances of uh, increasing with the market. So this is how the diversification it reduces the risk because all the stocks may not move in the same direction in the same proportion at the same time. So it may happen that one stock of Reliance Limited it has fallen in the portfolio of mutual fund but there is another stock of ITC Limited but that it has risen. So overall it may happen that the overall portfolio may rise. So risk is balancing off and that's why diversification is advantageous in the context of mutual funds. So now we can easily answer this question that the assertion diversification reduces the risk in mutual funds this is very much true. And the reason for it is that the, all the stocks which are there in the portfolio of the mutual funds, they may not move in the same direction in the same proportion at the same time. So both are correct and R is the correct explanation for A. So option number A would be the correct answer here. Now let's move to the next question. Which of the following is incorrect with regard to different agencies involved in setting up of a mutual fund? Options are 
A mutual fund is set up in the form of a trust which is established by a sponsor who is like a promoter of the company. The trustees of the mutual fund hold its property for the benefit of the unit holders. The AMC or the asset management company approved by the SEBI manages the funds by making investment in various types of securities. Registrar and transfer agent holds the securities of various schemes of the fund in its custody or none of the above. So to answer this question, we must be aware about the structure of mutual fund. So we must be aware that mutual fund is not something which is existing in its itself. There are different kinds of uh, entities which are involved in setting up of a mutual fund. So mutual fund is set up in the form of a trust. So mutual fund is being set up in the form of a trust and it has a sponsor, trustees, asset management company and a custodian and each have a separate role to play in the structure of mutual fund. So let's take a look at the role of each of these agencies involved in the structure of mutual funds. Now sponsor it is that entity which is ultimately promoting this mutual fund. So it is the main body that has established this mutual fund and it performs all the important functions like appointing the trustees and setting up of the asset management company. Now the trustees they are a persons which are securing the interest of the unit holders. So they are their interest of the unit holders and they are securing that the interest of the unit holders remains intact and it ensure, makes sure that the mutual fund it is complying with all the regulations of SEBI. Next is asset management company. Now mutual fund is investing its money in different kinds of assets and securities. So in order to manage those assets on a day to day basis, there is a need for this asset management company. So they are doing this thing. Another is custodian. Now custodian is responsible for safe custody of all the securities. So mutual fund is having a different sets of securities with it and it has to be managed and it has to be kept in a safe custody for preventing its any misuse or any uh, kind of uh, uh, misappropriation. So that's why this custodian is responsible. And then there is RTA that is Registrar and Transfer Agent. Now Registrar and Transfer Agent is more or less concerned with the work of maintaining and updating the investors records. So there are different sets of investors which are investing in the mutual fund and there may be some those investors who are coming in for the first time. There may be some investors who are leaving the mutual fund so a record has to be maintained and this record is maintained by the Registrar and Transfer Agents. So this is about the different persons which are involved in the structure of a mutual fund. So now we can easily answer this question that out of the statements given the option number D would be the incorrect one because registrar and transfer agents they hold the securities uh, they are not holding the securities rather they are helping in rather they are assisting in the transfer of securities and they are keeping the proper records of the investors. So now let's move on to the next question. Which of the following is not a feature of open-ended mutual fund schemes? Options are, they allow the investors to enter and exit as per their convenience. The units are bought and sold at the net asset value declared by the fund. The number of outstanding units remains constant in open-ended mutual fund schemes. All are correct features or none of the above is correct. So to answer this question, we must be aware about the open-ended and the close-ended mutual fund schemes. Now open-ended mutual fund schemes, they are those schemes which are always open. The investors, they can come and go anytime. So investors, they can enter the scheme by buying the units and they can exit this scheme by selling the units on a continuous basis. So this allows the investors to enter and exit as per their convenience. So they can enter at any time, they can buy the units and they can even sell the units and this has to be done at the net asset value which is declared by the fund. So this is an important value to be declared by the mutual fund and on the basis of this value, the uh, buying and selling it takes place. Now, important fact is here is that the number of outstanding units, it goes up or down. So it's the number of outstanding units would definitely change because there are some people who are buying in the mutual funds units and there are some who are selling in the mutual funds units. So this in the case of open-ended mutual fund schemes is not going to remain the constant one and it is going to fluctuate as and when the investors they enter or exit the fund. Next is the case of close-ended funds. So this is just the opposite of open-ended funds. 
So in this particular type of fund, the unit capital is going to remain fixed. It is not going to fluctuate or change. And these funds, they are only selling up a specific set of units. And this is, they are different from the open-ended funds because the investors, they cannot enter after the NFO period is op o over. NFO period is new fund offer. So whenever you are coming up with a new mutual fund issue, you come up with this NFO period in which you can apply for this mutual fund. But after the NFO period is over, the investors, they cannot put their money in this close-ended mutual fund. However, in this kind of close-ended funds, there is this facility which is made available to the investors in the form of liquidity on the stock exchange. So what the investors can do if they are having the units and they want to sell those units to get money, they can sell those units on the stock exchange platform to get the money. So these are about the open-ended and the close-ended fund schemes. So now we can easily answer this one that the option number C is going to be incorrect one because the number of outstanding units in case of an open-ended mutual fund scheme, they fluctuate as and when the investors they enter or exit the mutual fund. So answer is going to be option number C. Now let's move to the next one. Which of the following is incorrect with regard to collective investment schemes or CIS? Now in these schemes, the contribution or the payments which are made by the investors, they are pooled and utilized with a view to receive profits, income, produce or property. Investors do not have a day-to-day -day control over the management and operation of such scheme or arrangement. Mutual fund is a type of collective investment scheme as per SEBI regulations. All of the above are correct or none of the above is correct. So to answer this question, we must be aware about this concept of collective investment schemes. Now, first and foremost, you have to remember that the collective investment schemes, they are different from mutual funds and the SEBI regulations they specifically mention that collective investment schemes, they do not include, they rather exclude the mutual funds. So in collective investment schemes, different sets of persons, they are coming together, they are making contributions and payments. And the objective is to pool those payments in order to make some profits, income or any benefit in the form of property, etc. So they are pooling their money and this structure which is being created is being managed on behalf of the investors by a collective investment management company. So investors, they are not having any day-to-day -day control over the management and the operations of such scheme or arrangement. So this is about the concept of collective investment scheme in which people are coming together. They are investing their money, but they're not having the control over the operation of such scheme. Now let's understand why there was a need of creating this separate category of collective investment schemes. Now what happened was that in the 1990s, there were different sets of instances in which the money was raised from the people for setting up agro-based and plantation companies and the people they invested their money in these sorts of companies, but eventually they failed to generate any substantial returns on the investments made by the people. So in this way, people lost a huge amount of money through these kinds of schemes and the government decided that these schemes should be regulated by SEBI and they should be properly defined and proper regulation should be brought on for regulating such schemes. So as a result, SEBI collective investment schemes regulations 1999, they were introduced to regulate these schemes. Now, different changes have been made in the definition of collective investment schemes and the regulations therein in light of the changing market requirements or conditions. For example, in 2003, in the backdrop of Sahara and the famous Sharda cases, SEBI modified this definition of collective investment scheme. So SEBI rather widened the definition of collective investment scheme and decided to include any scheme floated by any person. So any scheme which is being run by any person, uh, it need not necessarily be a company. And any such scheme with a corpus of more than 100 crores shall be deemed to be a CIS. So any scheme which is there in which the corpus it exceeds 100 crores, so it means a huge number of people, they have invested a substantial amount in this kind of a fund. So in this case also, uh, what they have to do, uh, they have to comply with the collective investment scheme regulations given by the SEBI. So now we can easily answer this question that option number C would be the incorrect one here because a mutual fund is not a collective investment scheme as per SEBI regulations. Now let's move to the next one. As per the SEBI collective investment schemes regulations 1999, collective investment management company may 
Options are undertake any activity other than that of managing the CIS, act as a trustee of any CIS, launch any CIS for the purpose of investing in securities, none of the above or all of the above. So this question is being asked on the SEBI Collective Investment Schemes Regulations 1999 and specifically it deals with the Collective Investment Management Company, what it can do and what it cannot do. So to answer this question, we must be aware about this concept of Collective Investment Management Company. Now as per this concept, no person other than a collective investment management company which has obtained a proper certificate under these regulations should carry on a, or sponsor or launch a collective investment scheme. So if you have to launch a collective investment scheme, you have to set up this collective investment management company and no person other than this company can run these kinds of scheme. And also these companies, they are also required to comply with the different sets of SEBI regulations as issued from time to time. Now, as for the SEBI regulations, it is specified that these collective investment management companies, they should not. So it is important, they should not undertake any activity other than that of managing the CIS. So SEBI wants them to solely concentrate on managing the CIS. So that's why it's saying that you have, do not have to undertake any other activity or they cannot even be a trustee of any collective investment scheme because it may create a conflict of interest. Uh, they should not launch any collective investment scheme for the purpose of investing in securities and they should not invest in any collective investment scheme floated by it. So there are some regulations in place with regard to investment by collective investment management companies. However, it has also been provided that a collective investment management company may invest its in own collective investment scheme. So broadly it cannot invest in the collective investment schemes but it can in its own collective investment scheme but then only it can be but then also it can be only done if the disclosure is made properly and the proper fees and proper other charges they have been paid by that collective investment management company. So now we can easily answer this question that as per the SEBI regulations 1999, a collective investment management company cannot do all these. So the answer is going to be option number E that is none of the above. So friends, this was all about our discussion on some of the very important MCQs pertaining to the securities market. And if you have any query or you wish to know more about our courses, you can visit our website which is www.edutap.co.in or you can drop us a mail at hello at edutap.co.in or you can call us at 8146207241. So friends, if you found this video useful, please like the same, share it with your friends and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you wish to get regular updates on Telegram, you can subscribe to our Telegram channel, the link of which is given here as well as in the description to this particular video. And subscribing to our Telegram channel is also going to help you fetch the PDFs of all the discussions which we are doing on YouTube. So thank you friends.